All right. Welcome everyone to Yoga Book Club. I am Miss Daniel and I am ready to move with you guys. And tonight we're going to be moving to the Young Adult Book, YA, in the library community. Uh, Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. Um, this book was really great. It was up my, my alley because it's historical fiction and I love me some historical fiction. Um, it's a pretty wonderful love story. So if you're into like YA romance, this is a good one. Um, if you're into historical YA romance, this is a good one. And I'm excited to go to it with you guys. So let's get going. Now, if you want to play a playlist, go ahead and hit that playlist and meet me on your mat. All right. So coming into a comfortable seated position, whatever that looks like for you tonight. So you might want to stick some books underneath your booty. You might want to get a pillow or a blanket, or you might opt to just lay down. You can lay down on your back if, if you're feeling a little bit tight and that's where you want to start. Go for it. Um, I don't want to lay down because I might not get back up. But if you're feeling to lay down tonight, go ahead and start laying down. I am just going to start my playlist and you guys can hit play on whatever playlist you want to listen to tonight. And you can gently close your eyes. And start by taking a couple breaths in and out. They don't have to be particularly deep. We're just starting to recognize the breath in our body. Notice where your hands have rested on their own. Maybe they went palms down, and maybe you do want to bring them palms up, right? So palms down typically is a mudra for grounding, bringing you into your place. Whereas palms up typically is drawing in energy around you. So if you need a little bit of extra energy boost, you might want to go palms up. Allowing yourself to be fidgety if you need to be fidgety. Allowing your breath to be shallow. Allowing yourself this moment to show up on your mat in whatever state you're in. And just continue to breathe. And as you're breathing, I want you to see if you can remember that first crush that you had. See if you can bring back that feeling Recall those first moments of being like, ooh, I like that person. The first time you got nervous. The first time you just really enjoyed being around someone. The butterflies, the daydreaming, all of those things. I want you to see if you can put yourself back into that place. Or the numerous times that you've had those feelings, right? <laughs> and as you're sitting here, and as you're remembering that first crush, I want you to think about if you felt safe and excited or scared and unsure. Just kind of remembering the sense of that place. Now imagine losing yourself to those possibilities in your practice tonight. Allowing yourself to feel all those fresh beginning, fresh new crush feelings. I want you to open up your heart to the giddiness of that and allow yourself to feel all the joy of that. And now together we bring our hearts to prayer at heart center. Bring our hands. Did I say hands or did I say hearts? Bring your hands to prayer at heart center. Feeling your heart beating in your chest. Huge smile on your face as you take a deep inhale in. And exhale the breath out. Deep breath in. And exhale the breath out. And now bring your hands down to your knees. Eyes blink gently open and let's start moving. All right, so bring your hands down at your sides, taking a deep breath in, reaching those hands up. And exhale it out. 
out, bringing the arms down to your sides. Inhale, deep breath in. Exhale, arms down, gaze down. One more time, inhale that breath in. And exhale, the arms back down. Bringing the hands to lace behind the head. And peel those elbows back like you're trying to get the elbows to touch behind you. I know it's not possible, but I just want you to imagine that. So you're really opening the chest up here. And then exhale, curl it in. So you're taking like inhales into cat and cows here. Inhale, open up the chest, lift the chin. Exhale, curl it in. One more time. Inhale, open it up. And exhale, curl it in. Bring yourself back up to neutral and bring your arms out to the side. All right, now bring your hands back now. Lift your chin up like you're trying to get your hands to touch behind you. And then exhale, allow yourself to give, allow your arms to cross your body, giving yourself a hug. Open up the hands here. Gaze comes up. And self-hug. Two more times. Inhale, opening it up. Pull those arms back. Lift the chin, open the chest, exhale, and cross. And last time, inhale, open it up, hands come back, and exhale, and cross. And just because it's about to be Valentine's Day, we turn and we give ourselves a kiss. And we turn and we give ourselves a kiss. And now we get moving. Coming onto your hands and knees into tabletop position. Take an inhale here, lifting the chin up. Exhale, curl it in. Inhale, gaze is up. Exhale, curl it in. One more time. Inhale and curl it up. And exhale in. Coming to a flat back, bringing your right arm all the way up and just lifting the arm up and then bringing it down. Lift the left arm all the way up and bring it down. Tuck your toes and bring yourself into your child's pose, your first child's pose. It can be an active child's pose where your palms are up, your elbows are up, and you're lowering your chest down. Or it can be a regular child's pose where you're just bringing your forearms down and letting yourself rest. Now untuck the toes, slide the hands in, and come all the way to sit, sitting on your heels. Inhale, reaching your arms up. Gaze comes up to your hands. Exhale, bring your hands back down behind you, making a fist. Now draw that fist down to the ground to become lifting your chin up. And swing the arms back up. Gaze comes up. Exhale, open the arms, bring your hand back into a fist. Now you can do the fist again if you'd like, or you can even bring your hands down. Push your chest up, lift your chin up, and exhale, the arms back up, the arms come down, back to the ground, child's pose. Looking forward at your thumbs, go ahead and slide your chest all the way down so that you're laying on your chest, forehead comes down, inhale, lift up, engage the core, exhale down. Inhale, lift up, hands hover, chest lifts, and down. One more time, lift up, and down. Bring the hands off the mat, the elbows are high. Curl up to Gecko Cobra. Exhale, lower it down. Bring the hands to the chest, tuck the toes under, so it comes back towards the heels, child's pose. Lift up, down dog. Pedal your feet out and down dog. This is your first down dog, so allow yourself to take any form of this down dog that you need. Maybe you want to curl out your toes, crack those toes. Maybe you want to step your feet wide and shake out the hips a little bit. Whatever you want to do, find your own movement. Take an inhale, and now exhale, I want you to lower down onto your forearms. All right, now step those feet close together if you had them wide and sink your chest back towards your thighs. Like you're trying to touch your nose to your knees. 
Come forward into a forearm plank. Lower your belly down. Look at that. You're in sphinx. Who knew? Lift up here and lower. Lift up here and lower. Lift up here and lower. And then lower your chest down. Bring your hands to your sides. Lift up to cobra. If that's in your practice, you can do sphinx, you can do seal, or you can go right into your cobra. Lift your chin all the way up. And exhale, lower it down. Tuck your toes under, sent the seat back towards the heels, child's pose, lift the knees, down dog. Baby step your feet to the top of the mat. Moving slowly. And then hang when you're in forward fold. And I just realized that my shirt even says love today. Oh. And that Valentine's Day is coming up. This was like couldn't have been planned better. Hanging down, letting your head be heavy. Just taking some breaths here. Bringing the arms back behind you, lace the fingers behind the back again, lift the fingertips up towards the ceiling, pull the shoulders away from the ears, squeeze, and then only if you feel good about it, start to move your fist back over your head. You can just leave it going straight up towards the sky if you want, if that's more comfortable to you, or you can start pulling the stretch into the shoulders a little bit more by moving that hand forward. Now curl your chest here and slight bend to the knee as you lift all the way up to stand. Hands are still laced behind you as you swing that fist over to the right hip. And now look over the left shoulder. A little bit of a neck stretch here. Squeeze the elbows back, bringing the chest forward as you bring the chin forward. Now lower that left ear to the left shoulder. Coming back to neutral, bringing the fist down, flip so that the other thumb is on top, and then bring the fist over to the left hip, squeeze the elbows. Gaze goes over the left shoulder, keep squeezing those shoulders, opening up the chest, bring your chin to neutral, and then lower the right ear over to the right shoulder, and then all the way back to neutral. Inhale, bring those hands up. See if you can get them to touch. But it's not a big deal if you can't. Keep them wide if you can't. Inhale, look up. Exhale, pull the chest forward, swan dive forward. As the hands come down. Inhale, halfway look up, bend those knees. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, inhale, the arms come around and up. Two more times we're going to do that. So try to get your hands to meet each time. Inhale, look up. Exhale, swan back forward, stick the chest forward as you come down. Inhale, halfway look up. Exhale, forward fold, bend the knees slightly one more time here. Inhale, the arms all the way up, gaze comes up. Exhale, swan back forward, leading with your chest. Hands come all the way down. Step the right leg back. Step the left leg back. Lift your tailbone up, down dog. Hold your down dog, inhale, exhale, lower the forearms down. Pull your chest through, really working it through your shoulders, trying to get your nose to touch your knees, to touch your knees, and then pull yourself forward into a forearm plank, lowering the hips down, lowering the chest down just for a second to readjust yourself, and then lift to your sphinx pose. Pull the chest forward, squeeze the, the shoulder blades back behind you. Push into the hands here into seal, and maybe take one little step in. A biggie step in. Inhale, look up. Exhale, lower down. Slide the hands back to the chest, in line with the chest. Inhale, lift all the way up, full cobra. And exhale, lower it down. Tuck the toes under, sink the seat back towards the heels, child's pose. Inhale, lift up, down dog. Beautiful. Reach that right leg all the way up into the ceiling, bend the left leg and straighten it, 
Bend the left leg and straighten it. Bend the left leg and straighten it. Pull that right knee all the way forward. Step it in between your feet. Lower the back knee down. Untuck the back toes. Inhale, the arms come up. Okay, now first position yourself here. Right, bring your arms up high. Now pull them down. Same thing that we did that other week with the super fake love song. But this time I want you to squeeze the arms back. Really lifting the, the chin up. And come up. Good. Two more times. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, open the chest here. Pull the chin towards the ceiling. And all the way up. One more time here. We come all the way back. And up. Bring your hands to your knee. And now see if you can just find your balance here. Move a little bit further forward in the hips. You guys will know. I, it's a very subtle. I don't even know if you can see it on camera. But you're kind of going from here to here to stretching out the front of that left leg. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. Bring your hands down here. Tuck the back toes under. Pick the back knee up. Bring it forward. Bend the knees slightly. Inhale, the arms come around and up. Exhale, swans on forward, beating with your chest. Inhale, halfway to the foot. Exhale, forward fold. Step the left leg back. Step the right leg back. Hold your plank. Lift your tailbone up, down dog. Inhale. Exhale, lower down onto your forearms. Bring your chin back towards your knees. Ugh. Really push. Inhale, push back. And then pull yourself forward. I move my arms a little bit. Pull yourself forward so that you are in forearm plank. Lower the hips down. Lower the head down. Right arm comes out to the side, right ear comes down, left leg sweeps up and over. So you can stay here today or next level. Take that left arm up and over, lacing it with your fingers and pulling the chest forward. And come back to center. Bring that left arm out to the side. Bring the left ear down. Right leg comes up and over. And then right arm sweeps back. Laces fingers with the left hand. Squeeze the shoulder blades back behind you. Pop out the chest. And coming back onto your stomach. Inhale here, lift your hands, lift your chest, and lower. Lift your hands, lift your chest, and lower. Bring the hands back behind you, lace those fingers. Pull the fist back, squeeze the shoulder blades first. And now lift your chest. Leave your feet down, just lifting your chest up. And lower. Lower the hands down to the mat, bringing your hands to your chest. Lift to full cobra, baby cobra, sinks. Seal, whatever you want to do. Inhale, chin up. Exhale, down. Tuck the toes under. Sink the seat back towards the heels. Lift up, down dog. Left arm sweeps up. Bend the right knees. Straighten. Bend the right knee. Straighten. Bend the right knee. Straighten. Bring the, bend the left knee. Bring it through. Step in between your hands. Right knee comes down to the mat, untuck the toes, inhale, lift those arms up, Anjanasana. Hands are straight up towards the ceiling first, gaze is up towards the fingertips, and then pull the arms down, pull the arms back, lift the chin up, inhale, and exhale, pull the arms back up. Inhale, exhale, pull them down, squeeze a little bit tighter, and bring them back up. Last time, ready? Inhale. Exhale, open the arms up. Squeeze the arms back. Chin is lifted. 
Exhale all the way up. Bring the hands down, tuck the back toes under, lift the back knee. Actually, no, keep the back knee down and let's slide that right knee back. All right, come to sit on your knees. I'm gonna stretch out my wrist. You can stretch out your wrist with me or you can take a sip of water if you need a sip of water. But my favorite wrist stretch, you guys know by now I think, is to bring the palms of your hand down, fingertips towards your knees. The farther back your knees are, the harder that the stretch is. So if this is way too easy for you, just slide your knees back a little bit. I like it though, because I feel like it's just enough to give them a warm up without being so intense that it hurts. All right, flip your hands over so the palms are up. Fingertips are still towards your knees. Same kind of rocking motion here. All right, sweet. Moving into dancing camels. I know it's super early, but we're getting right into it. So if you've never done a dancing camel, you're gonna sit on your heels. You're gonna bring your left arm or your left hand to stick into the, imagine like you're sticking in your back left pocket, you know, when we used to wear jeans, when we like went out and did things. Okay, anyway, so stick it in that back pocket. You're going to take your right hand, it's going to sweep in front of you like that, right? So that's the arm motion, it's just a forward circle. Now, we can do it twice, ready? Actually do it with me. So that's one, two, and three. Big arm circle there. Okay, now this time, when it crosses you, you're going to lift your booty up. So we go one, stick your booty forward, or stick your hips forward, and come down. One more time, two, bring your hips forward, and come down. And last time, three, bring your hips forward, and come down. Moving into the left arm, so three circles where we keep our booty down. So one circle, two circles, three circles. Good. Now this time, inhale, stick the hips up, bring the hand back, and down. Two, come forward, and down. And last one, three, sweep it forward. And down, beautiful. Coming into tabletop position. Right toes come back, lift the right toes and lower. Lift the right toes and lower. Lift the right toes and lower. Lift the right toes, bend the knee, flex the foot, lift for one, lower. Lift for two, lower. Lift for three, Lower it all the way down. Left toes come back. Lift, lower, lift, lower, lift, and lower. Lift, bend the knee, flex the foot, lift for one, lower, two, lower, three, and lower. Bring it all the way down. Bring your right toe off to the side, left foot comes back. Right, so we're in this, uh, we're actually going to come up. So this is gate pose. So we're going to come all the way up. And then you're going to exhale down towards your left foot. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. We're going to come up. Now here's where it's going to get a little tricky. Take that right hand. Bring it back to the right foot. Lean back here. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, see one more, inhale, exhale, we come up. Good, now this time we come forward and just give yourself a little bit of a inner thigh stretch here. So bringing the forearms down and just stretching the inner thigh. Good, walking your hands back in, 
You're going to turn your right toes a little bit more at an angle. So you're going to come, how do I want to do this? Actually, I lied. Go back to the way you were. Sorry, I lied. Reach the right arm up here. And now take that left leg and lift it. And lower, lift, and lower, lift, and lower. Lift, draw it in, reach back for it. Now before you open it up, I want you to first pull the knee to make a line, right? So you're going to pull your hand, man, I can't toss the knee. You're going to draw your heel to your booty and pull the foot back. There, that's what I meant to say. Now once you feel like your knee is in a perfect line or as close to as you can, you're going to push the top of the foot into the hand, pull back. Open up the chest, maybe even glance back if it's in your practice. Otherwise, just look down, it'll help your balance. And open, push, 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 push. And all the way back down to tabletop. Beautiful. I'm going to pop on this side so you guys can see. Now we take our left toes out to the side, right toes come out to the back towards the mat. Bring yourself up so that your back and gate close. Inhale the arms up. Exhale over to that left leg. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Coming back up to neutral. Take your left hand and bring it down towards your heel. You can like lean back to get there. It's okay. You can bend that knee a little bit too if you need to. And then you're going to take your right arm and sweep it back. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale, one more inhale, and exhale, we come all the way back up, and then we come all the way forward onto your forearm, giving yourself a good inner thigh stretch. If you can't get on your forearms and you want to stay up on your hands, that's totally good as well. The idea is that you're getting into this area, so however you need to do that in a comfortable way for you, go ahead and do it. And coming back to center-ish. Oh no, see I was going to do the same thing. Not to center, you're just walking your hands over. So you plant the left hand, and then you bring the right foot up, and lower, right foot up, and lower, right foot up. Bend the right foot, draw the heel to the booty. Get a straight line with the foot here. Pull that foot back, get a good thigh stretch. And then push into the hands with the top of the foot. Look back over the shoulder if you want, but you don't have to. You can look down. The idea is to pull your chest forward. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Push the top of the foot into the hand. And lower it all the way down. Coming into child's pose. From your child's pose, reach back, lace your fingers together, pull the fist up towards the ceiling, roll a little bit onto the top of the head as you move the fist back behind your head. Weight should not be too hard on the head. Ease off if you feel like you're pushing into your head. It's just supposed to be a shoulder stretch, okay? So this is not like a super intense, don't do anything to hurt yourself kind of thing here. Just stretching out the shoulders. And then releasing the hands and allowing them to come all the way forward. Gaze comes forward at your thumbs. Pull your chest through. Lift up baby cobra. And lower down. Hands are at your chest. Lift up full cobra. And lower it down. Bring your hands into sphinx pose. If they're not there yet. Lift the right foot up. And now your option, you can either just pull that foot in and just work on pulling that foot in, or you can bring your left foot back and peel it in. It's just whatever is at your comfort level tonight. But if you are peeling the foot in, I want you to try to put the weight evenly distributed so you're not leaning into the right side. So you want to square off those hips. And release 
the foot, bring the hand down, bring the right foot in, and same thing, maybe take a moment here and see how this feels, and then reach your right hand back if it's in your practice, and draw it in. Now once you've drawn it in, square off your hips. Beautiful. And release that foot all the way down. We're going to do something unprecedented right now. We're going to walk our hands up and come to sit on our booty. Soles the feet down. Now we're going down onto your back. Bridge is mid-class. What? Soles of the feet are on the mat. Palms are down. I'm walking you through several steps of your bridge pose tonight. So, I like to be about hip distance apart in my knees. I like to have my hands kind of just about touching the backs of my foot. But if you're not there, if your feet are wider, just do what, you, what works in your body this evening. So pressing into the feet, lifting the tailbone up, coming into a bridge pose. This is your first bridge. I want you to squeeze the booty and lift the belly button up to the ceiling as much as you can, and then lower it down. All right, now I have a tendency to splay out in my knees. So we're gonna do that again, but we're gonna bring it to level two. So if you just wanna stay there, go ahead and stay there. But do work on bringing your knees together and lifting your belly button up. And when I say knees together, I don't mean like actually touching each other, I just mean going against the urge to let them splay out. Yeah, okay. Inhale, exhale, go ahead and lift those, those hips up. All right, now working the knees together, squeezing the booty. Level two, lace your fingers underneath your back like we've been doing all practice, and then kind of allow yourself to squeeze your shoulders a little bit closer together so you can draw those arms in. Now, press into the arms, see if you can get a little bit higher here. Use the arms to also push into the ground, same as the soles of the feet. So you're elevating by pushing down. Release the hands, lower it down. And now we're going to do one more level three. Pick and choose where you want to be. Not a big deal if you don't want to do this last one. Bring those feet in a little bit closer together. Now my thing is I can't actually do, we're going to grab our ankles, but I can't actually get the full grab until I'm up. So maybe some of you are already able to grab your ankles. I kind of can't. I usually just have my hands kind of down at my heels and I lift up and then I can kind of finagle myself down and in. Did you guys see how I did that? So push your, your belly button up, press into the arms, press into the feet, pull higher and lower all the way down. Hug your knees into your chest and rock side to side, releasing the lower back. Little bit of a spine massage here. We're gonna roll back and forward three times on your third time. You can come all the way up to boat pose, actually. We're gonna go into boat pose. So bring the feet back and forward. Bring the feet back and forward. Bring the feet back and forward and hold, hold your butt pose, working on a little bit of core. Because here's the thing with our back bends, right? It requires a really strong core. It requires a really strong front in order to support the muscles as they extend in the back. So we're gonna hold this boat pose and we're gonna lift our right foot up and down, left foot up and down, right foot up and down, left foot up and down. Hug your knees in, lift the right foot up and down, left foot up and down. So you can get both feet up, ooh, and down, beautiful. One more rock all the way up to stand. So rock back and up to stand. I use my hands to cheat a little bit, that's okay. Inhale all the way up, exhale, swan dive it forward, all the way down. Inhale, halfway look up. Exhale, forward, fold it down. Bring the right leg back. Bring the left leg back. Downward dog. 
Bring your forearms down. Send your nose back toward your knees. A little bit more. A little bit more. And forward into a forearm plank. Now this time just lower the knees down. And coming back into tabletop. Nice. Good job. Right leg comes back. Moving on. Right foot lifts. Lowers. Lifts. Lowers lifts and lowers. Lift the back foot, bend the knee, flex the foot, hold. Now this time reach your left arm forward and hold here. Maybe this is where you're at and that is totally okay. Or you can reach it back for the inside of the right foot and lift it up. Now if you want to get a little bit into that more, grab for the shin and lift up. Pushing into the right hand, give yourself space. Now you can move your gaze up, my hair's in the way. But <laughs> lift it up, lift your chin, and lower down. We're gonna take a child's pose before we move on to the next side. And coming into tabletop. Left foot comes back, left foot lifts and lowers, lifts and lowers, lifts and lowers. Lift it up, bend the foot, flex the foot and hold. Bring that right arm forward and then test your balance. Maybe you're just here today and that's okay. If you wanna try, bring that right hand back, grab the inside of the left foot or go down to the left shin and pull the foot up. Push into that left hand, give yourself space here, lift your chin. Keep pulling the leg up and lower it down. Beautiful. Coming back onto your heels, lifting yourself up so that you're now sitting on your toes, so tucking those toes under. All right, take your booty up, bring your hands back onto your, your lower back. So it's kind of like those drop backs that we've done standing. We're just gonna do them from a seated position. So tuck your tailbone under, use the support of your hands, lift your chin up. This is it, this is where you're gonna be. So if you're just hanging out here, working on length in the spine, that's fine. If you want to inhale here and then exhale, see if you can look back a little bit more. Keep pushing the hips forward and back to sit. We're going to do that two more times. We're not actually dropping our hands back. We're just working on creating length, right? So we're working on pulling it from our lower back and making it more of an entire chest, engaging the core, using everything to elevate us, right? So a lot of the times, when you think about going backwards, you're thinking about minimizing the space between the floor and your hands or your head, right? But in reality, in order to be able to do that and to be able to do that in a safe way, you need to create, you need to elongate. You need to elongate from the hips to the head, this entire space, so that you can actually reach, not, not drop, not a... You guys get what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe you don't. DM me if you're like, what are you talking about? And I'll, and I'll go a little bit clearer. But I want you guys to stop, to not think of it in terms of minimizing this, the space between your hands and the floor and more about maximizing the length of your torso. Maximizing the length of your spine. That, that's, I guess, what I was trying to say. All right, booties up. Hands back to the lower back. Tuck the tailbone under before we do anything else. So tuck that tailbone, prepare yourself, take an inhale, lift the chin up. Now maybe you're here. Maybe this is what you're working on, is just starting to feel safe and happy here. If you can, you're gonna take an inhale, get some air into your lungs, and then exhale. Don't drop back, just look back. And all the way up and down. I'm going to do that one more time. Just one. 
you guys can do it. I feel like dropbacks are like some of my favorite things to do. Finally, because I feel like I'm starting to get the mechanics of it and it's not what I thought it was. All right, last one. Lift your booty up. Hands come to the lower back. Tuck your tailbone under. Squeeze the butt. Now some people will say actually to not engage the booty, but I have found that I have a, um, that my lower back is much more bendy than my upper back. So if I'm engaging the core, I'm actually starting to use more of my upper body than my lower body. So for me, engaging the booty actually helps in my back bends a lot. That might not work for you. If you have a really bendy upper back, then maybe don't, you don't need to engage as much. If you do have a super bendy lower back and you dump too much, try to engage the booty. Hands to the lower back. Tuck the tailbone under. Bring the hips forward. Engage the booty. Look up. And then only if you're ready, look back. With your eyes and your chin. And all the way back up. Child pose. Walk your hands forward. Release the back. Take a pause here. Gaze comes forward at your hands. Pull yourself forward back onto your belly. Bring the right foot in. Bring the left foot in. Push into the hands. Lift to a cobra or a sphinx or a seal. Lift the chin up and lower the legs down, lower the chest down. Bring your hands back, place your fingers, pull that fist back, allow it to pull your chest up. Now on the three count, you're going to lift your back feet up. Ready? So one, two, three, lift and hold for one, two, three. Everything down. Bring your hands underneath your um, your cheek and just take a moment to chill out here. Take a breath. We just did a lot of work. We have one more thing to do and then it's all downhill from there. So just take a few breaths here. Shake out your booty a little bit. Tuck your toes under, send your seat back towards your heels, all the way back, not into child's pose, but into a seating position back on your heels. Okay, moving through our camels. So we've done a ton of work opening up the chest, so you might get deeper into a camel tonight than you have in the past. On the flip side of that, you might also find that you're already quite sore and that you've already done a lot of work there, and then in that case, just take these easy. Because doing these things easy now will help you in the long run of your practice. So, just bear with where you are. Kind of take note for a second. Okay, so, first one we're going to go through is a just normal panel. So, we bring our booties up. Now, I personally like to have my toes tucked under because I like to grab my heel and it makes it easier to get to my heel. But maybe that doesn't work for you, maybe you like that. Whatever, doesn't make a difference. If you are staying with your feet down, don't worry so much about getting the hand down. You can kind of just lean back, not a big deal. But I'm gonna tuck my toes under, and then I'm gonna bring my left hand down to my left ankle. I'm gonna take my right hand and sweep it in that forward motion that we did before. Turn my shoulders so I'm squaring my shoulders, and pull that hand back as my gaze comes back. Take a few breaths here, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and one more inhale, exhale, sweep that arm forward again, and lower it down. Moving to the other side, I'll turn over. Actually, you could do one more camel on that side if you want, because the other way that you can do camel if that way did not work for you, is to bring your hands to your chest, or not your chest, your booty. Pull your hips forward, gaze is up, drop that right hand down, or that left hand down, sorry, we're on the left side, 
and bring that right arm forward. So that could have been easier for you than going from ground up. So go ahead and kind of try that and see which one works better for you. And then in, a, in another second, we'll both go and we'll do the right side together. And we'll do, them in, we'll do them twice, we'll do them both ways so that you can kind of see which one works better on what side of your body. Are you guys ready? Okay. So I'm going to start with the same way that I've done on the other side, and then we'll do the, the drop back. So I'm starting with my toes tucked under, and then I bring my right hand to my right ankle, sweep the left arm around and up, square off your shoulders, reach that left arm back, and then the gaze follows the hand. Continue to square your shoulders, continue to move your hips forward, engage the booty, keep breathing, Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and come all the way up. How'd that feel? I mean, like, I, if I'm being honest with you guys, I'm feeling, I'm starting to feel the soreness in my lower back as well. So if you're starting to get tired there, we've done a lot of work. So you, you might be feeling tired and that's okay. We're going to do one more of that alternative way to get into it. And then that's it for these. So. Coming up, if you'd rather come up, bringing your hands to your lower back. Use the hands on your lower back to support your lower back. That's why they're there. They're also there to remind you to keep moving the hips forward. So moving the hips forward, inhale, exhale, start to look back. Allow that right hand to float down. Allow the left arm to float back. Square your shoulders. Squeeze your booty and breathe. And then bring yourself all the way back up. Beautiful job. Bringing yourself into a child's pose. Tuck your toes under. Lift your knees up, down dog. Step your feet to the top of the mat. Scurry, walk, whatever you want to do, and hang in forward fold, fully releasing the back. So you're going to lace your fingers behind your head, tuck your chin to your chest, and really like allow yourself to release here. Releasing your hands down to the mat. Go ahead and step your right foot back, left foot back, down dog. Reach your right leg up and high, coming into pigeon, so bend that right knee and bring the right knee back behind the right wrist, lowering the foot down. Now, as always, this foot, this front shin can be as straight as you want it or it can also be as close to your hip as you want it. So. Uh, if you want to work on straightening the, that front shin, you just take that right foot and you walk it more parallel to the front of the mat. If that's too much, if that's too tight in your hips, and it is for me, you can walk that right foot back towards your left hip. Square off your hips here. If you're leaning a little bit to the right, it's not a big deal. You'll work the mobility. You'll get centered eventually. So just work on it. Don't give up where you are. Find some comfort. So if you need a lean to get comfort, go ahead and lean to get comfort. Also, since you're home, if you want to throw a blanket or a pillow underneath that right hip, you can do that as well. We're going to lower it down, releasing the lower back, simply in a rest tonight. So not doing anything too crazy here, not trying to make this a difficult pose. Walking your hands in, bringing your hands inside that right knee, 
lift your back foot up and now only if you want to reach back for the foot if you want to stay low for this just stay low and we're not going to do anything too deep because i think that if i mean if you feel like super bendy you can go for the mermaid bind right now if you're feeling like maybe you've done a little bit a lot in your back that's kind of how i'm feeling just kind of hang out here if you don't know what the mermaid bind is just hang out here tonight we will do mermaid bind you will learn what it is in another class but for tonight just chill here just work this lowering that back foot down tuck the toes under lift the knees and the right leg back back to down dog left leg comes up and high reach it back bend the left leg pull it forward lowering down to pigeon on the opposite side pick the way you feel the most comfort and then lower it down lowering yourself down onto the mat lowering your forehead down coming into that rest version of this pose just totally letting yourself go And now you can sit yourself up, bringing the hands to the inside of that left leg. Bring your right foot up, same thing as last time. Stay low if you still feel good and you want to just chill low. Or bring that right leg in and just peeling it in. Just working this, this thigh stretch in your like subtle, 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 really gentle back bend. Here it's much more about the thigh stretch than it is about the back bend. And then releasing that leg down slowly, slowly, slowly. Putting your weight onto your left side, sweeping both legs forward. And lowering it all the way down onto your back. Hugging your knees into your chest and releasing the lower back here. Just let it go, rock a little bit side to side. Bring your hands to your knees in circles out for one, two, three and circles in for one two and three beautiful hug your right knee into your chest and send the left leg down draw that right knee across the body open out the left arm or the right arm sorry about that gazes over to the right and just allow that right leg to drape over your left body giving yourself a twist and back to center, pass it into the right hand, and now open up the left arm and just open up that right knee a little bit here. And back to center, hug both knees into your chest again, rocking side to side. And then holding the left knee as you lower the right leg down. Draw that left knee in, pass it off into your right hand, Draw that right leg across the right, or the left leg across the right body, opening up the left hand, gazes to the left, twist. And then pass off that left leg into the left hand, open up the right arm, gazes to the right, leg that drops open to the left. And back to center, giving yourself one more hug. Here. And then lowering the legs down to the mat. Go ahead and shimmy them out, getting out any final excess energy that might have been stored up in the lower body. Release it all out. Bringing your hands out, palms facing up. Maybe squeeze your shoulder blades a little bit here to really puff out the chest. 
Take an inhale as you fill the belly, fill the lungs, and then exhale it out. Allow the body to be heavy. Take an inhale, fill the belly, and fill the lungs, and exhale it out. Go ahead and bring both your arms in to give yourself a final reclined hug here. So really working that shoulder stretch, giving yourself a hug with the right arm on top. And opening the arms. And then exhaling and giving yourself a final hug here with the left arm on top. So you can get deeper into that, that shoulder stretch, that, sho that hug, that self-hug. And let it go. Allowing your arms to take whatever final mudra you prefer. So maybe you want to put your hands on your heart. Maybe you feel comfortable with your hands on your belly. Or maybe you do enjoy taking Shavasana with your arms out to your side. So just find that final pose that connects you to your breath and to your inner peace. And with each inhale and exhale, you become heavier. You allow yourself to go, to let go. Inhale and exhale. Taking these next few moments for yourself to just find some stillness and just slow it all down. As you're resting in your Shavasana, let's continue to leave our hearts open. To remember that love challenges us and drives us and it fills us up. So as we rest and as we move forward after our practice, we work on keeping our hearts open. And by doing so, we help to create a world where everyone is able to experience those wonderful, giddy, joyful feelings of love in safety and acceptance. So if you feel ready, you can begin to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Reaching your hands above your head and stretching your arms long, stretching your feet long along the mat. Inhale and reach, and then exhale and hug your knees to your chest. So you can bring your arms forward and hug across the shins, pulling the knees in. Taking time here and moving slow. Allow yourself to roll over onto your favorite side, whatever side that might be, and moving the forearm of that favorite side underneath your head. So Allow your head to rest on that forearm. You can use it as a pillow. Take that opposite hand and drape it across the front of the body. And then press the palm of that opposite hand into the ground and use that hand to push you up to a seated position. Bringing your hands onto your knees, palms are facing up. Take an inhale and an exhale. Bringing your hands to Anjali Mudra, prayer position in front of the heart. Feeling your heart beat, feeling your heart expand. Take a moment to sit tall, to roll your shoulders back and to squeeze your shoulder blades back so you're moving forward with your chest. So you're moving forward off of your mat with your heart. Take a deep inhale here and then exhale, bow down to your mudra bowing to yourself, taking a moment to always appreciate and send love to yourself. And now send that love to everyone that was practicing with you virtually tonight and everyone that will be practicing virtually with you in the future by watching this video. The light within me bows to the divine light in each one of you. Thank you so, so much for allowing me to guide you in your practice this evening. Namaste. Thank you guys.
thank you guys, thank you guys. I had such a fun class. Um, I'm gonna like slide this up, but keep it far from my face because I've realized that it makes a really crazy loud noise when you guys come out of the Vasana. But um, I know that was a challenging class, but I so, so appreciate you guys taking it with me and really working on opening up our hearts. Um, if you're in the mood for a little bit of romance, last night at the Telegraph Club was a wonderful book. Um, a lot of heart in it, a lot of a lot of challenge and drive, and just a beautiful book, beautifully written. Um, and if you like historical fiction, like I like historical fiction, this was a wonderful perspective to read. Uh, so last night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. Go read it. Thank you guys so much. I will see you next time. Mwah! Sending you all lots and lots and lots and lots of love. Mwah. Bye, guys.